when it was mysteriously delivered to, to Nicholas Rorick in 1923. He carries it around. He ends up going to India with it. Um, by 1929, he's, he's uh, had this huge building, a 29-story Art Deco building built for him in New York City by, by uh, Louis Horch, uh, an investment banker, with a cornerstone uh, uh, prepared to have this sacred casket bearing the stone and other artifacts sent from India, because he's now taking it in 1923 from Paris to India, and placed in the cornerstone for, for posterity. All of this might seem a bit too incredible, except for the fact that the laying of the cornerstone for the master building was a major event in 1929, attended by foreign dignitaries from around the world, from Spain, France, Poland, Australia, Romania, and a host of other countries. Why would they all turn out for this event? This 1929 event is very important. Albert Einstein sent a tribute, which I have a copy of, to, to, to the construction of the building, to the meaning of Nicholas Rorick, who he was, what he was doing for humanity, uh, uh, and, the, and, and why the laying of this cornerstone was so important. Uh, Rabindranath Tagore, many, many uh, luminaries and notables, uh, government officials and the like, including Henry Wallace, who became FDR's vice president first Secretary of Agriculture and then Vice President in the next decade. And that becomes very intriguing, uh, what, what all the connectedness is in terms of FDR, Freemasonry, and the stone. Just as Freemasons were involved with the designing of the dollar bill, they were also involved in the construction of the master building. As noted earlier, the master building was financed by Louis Horch, who was appointed to a number of government offices during FDR's administration. In fact, he was placed in charge of the Department of Commerce by his fellow Freemason and Rurik disciple, Henry Wallace. As we have seen, Wallace, in his letters, shared a fascination with the Stone of Destiny. And so the stone today is in this building? The stone is in this casket, said to be in this casket. They, they're, the reports I have received from the Rorick Museum uh, would have that stone in this Rajput casket in the cornerstone of the master building. The interest of men like Albert Einstein, Henry Wallace, and not to mention all the foreign dignitaries becomes quite intriguing when one considers the full contents of the casket that was said to be placed inside the cornerstone. I'm familiar with the ingredients of the Rajput casket uh, by uh, having read letters from uh, Zina Fosdick and her own uh, notebook entries and also uh, because uh, Aida Toskaya him herself one of the co-curators of the Rorick Museum uh, wrote out what Zina Fostick had stated they had placed in the Rajput casket in Darjeeling before it was delivered to the city of New York to be placed in the cornerstone. As Buff Perry explained, the letter that describes the contents of the casket comes from Zina Fosdick, a longtime devoted disciple of Nicholas Rorick who would later become the director of the Rorick Museum. The museum photo collection is filled with images of Fosdick alongside Rorick while they were in Darjeeling, India, where the casket was prepared. As such, it stands to reason that she would have known the details of what they put inside. The letters written by Sina Fosdick, um, and it was actually uh, an entry in her diary and what's written here is an accounting of all of the ingredients that are in the Rajput casket that was prepared in Darjeeling, India um, in 1928 
to be delivered to New York, to Manhattan, uh, and to be placed in the cornerstone of the master building. Uh, there are a lot of interesting things uh, that were placed in the in the Rajput casket, uh, for example, an image of Maitreya printed on Tibetan paper. As we showed earlier, in the occult belief, the Maitreya is said to be the last messiah that will come. The Maitreya is seen as the final deliverer and incarnation in the Buddhist tradition. Again, he's also Kalki in the Hindu tradition, the tenth incarnation of Vishnu. Vishnu is the great god of, of Hinduism. So they're not mixing up Jesus with Maitreya, but they are seeing Maitreya as a messianic figure, a world messiah who would answer all of the expectations of all the world religions at one time. The reason Rorik would not mix up Jesus with Maitreya is because of the New Age belief that Maitreya is the true Christ, while Jesus was only his disciple. This is also the teaching of Scottish mystic Benjamin Krem. Maitreya embodies what we call the Christ principle, the Christ consciousness. And 2,000 years ago, he overshadowed his disciple, Jesus. Jesus was not the Christ except for three years. Over these three years, from the baptism to the crucifixion, Jesus was overshadowed by Maitreya. And when he spoke, sometimes it was Maitreya speaking, sometimes it was Jesus. We featured Krem in our last documentary, Riddles in Stone. He is the founder of Share International and has been declaring for more than 30 years that Maitreya would be arriving soon. Maitreya is standing by, ready to come into the world at any moment. When we spoke with Krem in 2006, he had just come from speaking to the United Nations. While I was in New York, I gave a talk at the United Nations and uh, there was a large group of, of, uh, of New York uh, theosophists a certain number from outside the United Nations were allowed to come to the top. And they were very responsive, very responsive. These theosophists are modern members of the Theosophical Society, of which both Nicholas Rorick and Henry Wallace were members. Other famous members included Thomas Edison and Mahatma Gandhi, as well as Gandhi's close friend Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India. Also pictured here, beside Nicholas Rorick. But in addition to the image of Maitreya, what were the rest of the contents buried inside the cornerstone of the master building? A portrait of M.M. Uh, this, I believe, is, is, uh, is uh, Master uh, Moriah. Master Moriah was one of the names given to a spirit that is said to have inspired Madame H.P. Blavatsky. Rorick's wife, Helena, claimed that the same spirit was in contact with her and inspired her writings. It's Master Mariah, uh, who is actually Helena Rorick, channeling uh, this, this, uh, this entity, if I, I can put it that way. One of her books was titled, On Eastern Crossroads, in which she wrote extensively about the stone in her husband's possession, calling it the serpent stone, and saying, the stone cometh, and it is a most grievous error to deny the stone. In fact, the quote from one of Henry Wallace's guru letters about the new country that goes forth, and the admonition to await the stone, comes directly from this book.